Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy. Today is July 1st, 2024. It's a little bit before four o'clock in the afternoon where I am. Um, and I pray all of you are off to an amazingly beautiful and blessed day thus far. And not just a new day, but a new month. Um, I pray July is a prayerful and powerful month for each and every one of you. Um, the other day, I happened to wake up in the middle of the night. It was like the wee hours of the morning. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to go back to sleep. I'm just going to open up my word and, um, you know, read the Bible. And I randomly opened up to the book of Judges. More specifically to, I think, around chapter 16, where we can find the story of Samson and Delilah. And I was all ready to turn to another page and find something else to read because I just kind of felt like the story of Samson and Delilah just wasn't anything I could relate to right now. Um, I didn't really see how I could glean anything from it for the season that I'm in. Um, however, something, and in hindsight, I believe it was the Holy Spirit, would not allow me to just skip past this biblical story. In fact, I felt led to go all the way back to chapter 13 that begins with the announcement and birth of Samson. Okay, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with the biblical story, Samson was born to a mother who'd been barren for quite some time. And an angel appeared to his mother and told her that she would give birth to a son. But the angel also gave her very specific rules to follow while she was carrying him in the womb and how to raise him up as a boy. Uh, the angel told her that um, Samson would be a Nazarite, right, which is someone who is born for the service of the Lord, and he would not be allowed to have drink um, or strong wine. Um, he could not cut his hair, and he could not come in contact with the dead, okay? Um, I believe there were other Nazarites in the Bible. I'm thinking Samuel was one, and I'm thinking um, John the Baptist was another, Okay. There was a very special and very specific call on Samson's life, and God wanted to use him to deliver the children of Israel from the Palestines. So I'm reading through the scriptures, just really trying to understand why I felt so led to meditate on these scriptures. I didn't understand what the Lord was trying to say to me. I'm just being honest with you. Like, what was the specific revelation? What was the knowledge? Um, you know, what is the wisdom I was supposed to be taking from this passage of scripture? Um, that was definitely being highlighted to me, right? So when the Lord wants you to read something or he wants you to glean something, like you will feel pushed, you will feel led um, to hover in that place, right? To hover in those scriptures, to meditate on those scriptures. And that's what I felt in the wee hours of the morning, um, when I finally got to chapter 16 and began to read the story of Samson and Delilah, I thought maybe the Lord was ministering to me about, um, you know, just how a lot of men of God are struggling with, um, you know, lust, you know what I mean? Lust, temptation, and a flat out inability to control themselves where women are concerned. Um, but for some reason, something within me said, no, no, that's not it. That's not what the Lord wants you to focus on at all. So I finished chapter 16. Um, and I just closed the Bible. And before I went back to sleep, I asked the Lord to make it clear to me just why he had me read those chapters and just what he is saying to me right now. Because I knew that he was trying to say something, um, but I just wasn't sure. Like, what, what was I supposed to be getting <laughs> from the Samson and Delilah story? The following day, as I was enjoying my day, I just heard in my spirit, Delilah. And then the question in my head was, what is your Delilah? Right? So many of us read that biblical story and automatically do what I did, which is consider it a cautionary tale of what happens when we break our vows to God and we allow sexual immorality to overtake us. But the implications of this particular biblical story are much deeper than that. Okay? The warning is actually far reaching and widely applicable to us all. It goes much deeper than just sexual immorality church delilah doesn't just represent an ungodly woman ready to seduce you and drag you to hell okay no delilah is whatever sin you know is no good for you but you play with it anyway 
Okay, scripture tells us that from the very first time Delilah asked Samson to reveal his weakness, he lied to her. Okay, he would not tell her the truth because he did not trust her. He knew that she was no good for him. He knew that she didn't have his best interest at heart. He knew she may be the depth of him, but he put his head in her lap anyway. And so that is Delilah. It's whatever sin we are cozying up to, knowing full well that it is no good for us. So what is that sin? It's that ungodly relationship filled with fornication that you know is coming between you and the Lord. It's that marijuana. It's those other drugs, right? Uh, it's those cigarettes. It's those black and milds. It's that pornography. It's that gambling. It's that alcohol. It's those unhealthy, processed, fatty, and sugary foods. It's that laziness and that sedentary lifestyle. It's whatever sin you are consistently doing all while fully aware of potential disaster it could bring. It's the sin you literally play games with, right? In Samson's case, he'd violated his Nazarite vow on multiple occasions. Okay, scripture reveals that, definitely. However, it was playing around with Delilah that caused his tragic end. The Holy Spirit made it very clear to me that there is something he has continually warned me about over a significantly long stretch of time. Okay, our Heavenly Father has been kind to me. He has been merciful. But the warning as of recently is to stop playing with Delilah. Okay, that sin has been put in place to kill me both spiritually and physically. And so brothers and sisters, I'm sharing this with you because I know it is the same for some of you. It doesn't matter what the sin is, right? The details are between you and the Lord. The lesson here is that whatever it is, it must go. You must get rid of it and never return to it again. You know it's not good for you. And no matter how enticing, you must be willing to be done with it. Otherwise, the consequences may be tragic. Right? So what am I saying? Get your head off of Delilah's lap. You know, typically the lap is often a place of comfort. Right? It's a place where you feel safe. It's a place where you feel protected. It's a place where you feel like you can let your hair down and be vulnerable. Right. And while that may have been the case, you know, on grandma's lap, Delilah is quite different. OK, the enemy wants this sin to feel comfortable. The enemy wants this sin to feel like it's doing you some type of favor. The enemy wants you to feel like it's really not that bad, whatever it is. It's really not that bad. But in reality, its assignment is to destroy you. Of all the stories in the Bible. I always felt like Samson's was one of the most tragic. Anytime I read the story of Samson, it's just, it's tough, right? Samson was chosen. Samson came forth at an appointed time and was anointed to do something great in the earth. But Samson went the way of disobedience, lust, and lack of self-control. And as a result, his end was likely not in alignment with what God had originally planned for him at all. I, no one's going to convince me that God brought him forth during that very specific time with a very specific assignment to be a deliverer for his people, right? And then he ends up with his eyes gouged out. And he ends up dying such a tragic death. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't think that that's what God had planned for Samson. But that is what happened to Samson because of Samson's own decision making. And so church, I feel like it's time for us to take personal inventory of our own lives, right? Ask yourself, what is your Delilah? What is the sin that keeps you coming back even though you know it is no good for you? What sin are you literally giving your strength and free will away to? Right. And after you've identified what that is, repent and ask the Holy Spirit for strength to resist it from this day forth. Don't continue to play with it. 
Don't try to convince yourself that you can have a little bit or do it every now and again, or it's not really that big, or it doesn't really have that much of a stronghold on you. I can stop whenever I want to. Listen, you need to be completely done with it and refuse to ever return. In this new season, we want to make sure we're not cozying up to old habits and sin patterns that the enemy can and will use to assist us in destroying ourselves. Okay, full transparency. This is my Delilah. Carbs and sugar. Give me a cinnamon raisin bagel with cream cheese and I'll be your best friend. Okay, croissants. Those are my thing. When I was in Paris, I was in heaven. Okay, nice and buttery and crunchy, right? French fries galore. Socket to me cake, and I love to bake. So this is all the more a problem, right? Pecan pie cheesecake. Iced coffee with tons of either oat or almond creamer that is loaded with sugar, right? Potato chips, sweet tea, rice, pasta. At first glance, you may be like, oh, Dorothy, that isn't that bad. You know, it's not like you smoke weed, right? It's not like you you tip back Hennessy every night, right? But the truth is, consistently consuming these processed, high-carb, low-nutrient, jacked-up foods is bad. (laughs) It is bad. It's bad for my health, right? At some point, I decided to incorporate some more fruit into my diet, and I realized that I loved cold watermelon. And you may say, well, Dorothy, watermelon is excellent, right? It's a whole food. It's fruit. It's good for you. Well, not if you have the ability to consume an entire watermelon in 24 to 36 hours, right? The amount of sugar, albeit natural, that is in a whole watermelon is obscene, right? And I will sit and eat it all with no help from anyone else, right? So so what are we talking about? We're talking about sugar, sugar, and more sugar, That's my Delilah. It has caused me to have quite a few close calls in my health over the years. And it is single-handedly the culprit of my significant weight gain over the past few years. So this is a picture of me June 2021. And this is a picture of me the other week, June 2024. And it's like, oh my, well, how did that happen? Well, me. Me. Playing with Delilah in the kitchen, whipping up, you know, my famous Ferraro Rocher chocolate cupcakes when I should have been crunching on an apple and going to the gym. Right, me playing with Delilah, playing games. I was consistently eating things that literally caused me discomfort after eating it, right? Things that cause inflammation in my body, things that cause weight gain, cause brain fog. It's like while I'm eating it, it's wonderful. But afterward, my poor body always let me know that this is not benefiting at all. And yet I keep eating these things because they taste good. And the worst part is that the Lord has given me countless dreams about my diet and that he doesn't want me to eat these things anymore, especially not in the volume that I have eaten them in the past right so in one dream I saw a cake and immediately I went over to grab some I got the cake in my hand but then I saw my hand put the cake back so basically the Lord was telling me look look I need you to steer clear of the cake you eat way too many sweets I knew the Lord was telling me to stop eating sweets and if not altogether at least stop doing it in the large amounts that you are consuming So listen, I don't have a problem with being transparent if it will bless someone else, right? We don't all have the same Delilah. The enemy isn't coming to tempt me with Hennessy or weed or pornography. Those aren't my wave. Those are not my vices. But he will roll up on me with whispers about how nice it would be to have a slice of cake. And why? Because the plan is to continually lure me into Delilah's trap so that ultimately I end up like Samson gone before my time and possibly having never truly fulfilled God's purpose for my life. And it's the same with all of us in the body of Christ. I'm not special. He has had ample time to study each of us and send temptations according to what will actually work. You may be able to look at a slice of cake and push it right away. Cake may not be your thing. Sugar may not be your thing. 
But whatever your thing is, trust me, the enemy knows what it is. And that is the Delilah that he keeps sending. And that is the Delilah that you keep playing with. Here's the thing. It's not really about the sin itself. Because again, the sin can be whatever. The warning to the church today is to consider what the sin produces. And that is death. Right? If we take a look at James chapter 1 verses 15... It reads, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Yeah, that's what sin brings forth, death. That's what playing with Delilah brings forth, death, right? And so along with the warning to stop playing with Delilah, I give you some encouragement Because I know it may feel sometimes like almost impossible to stop doing something that your flesh is so conditioned and inclined to do. It may feel like an uphill battle, right? Perhaps like me, you have tried to stop, right? Redirect and do the right thing in the past, only to end up back with your head in Delilah's lap again. But I want to remind you right now of God's word, Okay, because church, many of us are crying out for deliverance and freedom from different types of bondages. But the truth is, we've already been given the authority to handle this scandal, right? Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. In my Bible, these words are highlighted in red, which means it comes directly from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not up for interpretation. Right. There's an authority that we have been given according to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's for those of us who are in the body of Christ. We don't have to be bound by Delilah's temptation or consistently lured into her lap. We have the authority to trample upon the works of darkness and walk in freedom. This freedom has already been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Attempting to resist Delilah in your flesh is futile. I have tried to just leave the sugar alone on many occasions. Okay. It has not worked. However, Philippians 4.13 reminds us of precisely how we can walk in victory. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in our own flesh. Delilah may be too overpowering because that sin appeals greatly to our flesh. However, when we incorporate the authority of Christ and we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, there's nothing we can't do. I encourage you to get into the prayer closet and come out of agreement with whatever Delilah you've been playing with in recent weeks, months, or even years. Listen, God is merciful, church. But the story of Samson is a stark reminder that sometimes we may end up having to deal with the awful consequences of our own decision making. Delilah makes you feel comfortable smoking those cigarettes in black and mild. But when they diagnose you with lung cancer, what then? Delilah makes you feel comfortable sleeping around, fornicating, because of course your flesh convinces you that you're human and you quote unquote have needs. But when they diagnose you with HIV or any of these other incurable STDs, what then? Right? Delilah makes you comfortable going to the casino to gamble here and there. Right? But when a financial emergency emerges and you don't have what you need because you've wasted it in the casino, what then? Delilah makes you feel comfortable eating whatever fried, processed, and sugary food you feel like eating, but after that heart attack or stroke leaves you having to learn to walk and talk again, what then? It's not a game, church. And I just felt so arrested the other day when the Lord gave me this revelation from these passages of scripture. He's letting me know that I need you to stop playing with Delilah. I've already told you how I want you to eat. And I've already told you that (laughs) the enemy is on your back and this is how he's doing it. Stop playing. Stop playing. Let me give you one last passage of scripture. Matthew chapter four, verses five through seven reads, then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, 
He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written, again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So just to give you some context, Jesus Christ is in the wilderness, and the enemy has tempted him to throw himself off of the pinnacle of a temple. Okay, the devil then goes on to actually recite part of Psalm 91, the nerve of him, okay, and remind Jesus that God's word says the angels will protect him and keep him from harm. So basically, go jump, jump. Doesn't the word say that, you know, your your father will <laughs> send his angels and make sure that you don't dash your foot against a stone, right? However, we need to pay attention to Jesus's response. He says, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Because basically, yeah, my father could most definitely send divine assistance to save me from danger at any time. But why should I do this stupid thing and tempt my father? Why should I engage in self-destructive behaviors just to see if my father will help me and get me out of whatever problem I knowingly create for myself? And church, this is it. This is what we're doing when we play games with Delilah. It's the problem we're willingly creating for ourselves. It's the sin that looks, smells, sounds, and tastes like sin. We are fully aware that it is sin. We are fully aware that it is self-destructive. We are aware that it is dangerous, and yet we continue to play with it. It's as though the enemy has taken us to the pinnacle of the temple, told us to jump, and we keep jumping. Because we are so sure of God's continual grace, mercy, and forgiveness. But the lesson here is no, no, we're not going to tempt God. We're not going to continue to play with Delilah. We're going to walk in self-discipline. We're going to walk in the fruit of self-control. We're going to say no to the thing that the enemy is trying to use to kill us spiritually physically in every other way he can kill steal and destroy listen however delilah is showing up in your life right now give her a pink slip fire her today her services are no longer needed her services are no longer needed um i can't tell you you know when The Holy Spirit gave me that revelation. There was nowhere for me to hide. There was nothing for me to do other than repent and really get serious about what the Lord has been telling me for quite some time now. The last thing I want is to continue to play games and have my health go on a major decline. You know, in this video, I'm talking about weight gain, right? I'm I'm, I'm more fluffy than I was a couple years ago. But weight gain is the least, okay, of what sugar in the body can do um and i don't want any awful reports back from the doctor and i don't want to have to battle any type of sickness and disease that i would have never had to battle you know had i just listened to the lord had i just told myself you know what we're not going to play in delilah's lap anymore the lord has already warned you and you need to stay away so really that's all i have for you on this video i don't want to belabor um but i definitely pray that this video blessed you Um, and I pray that you get before the Lord and you, and you talk to the Lord about your individual Delilah. What is that besetting sin? What is that sin that has you by the nose? Um, and whatever it is, you know, that you partner with the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in the freedom that was already purchased. You hear what I say? Walk in the freedom that was already purchased. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You are no slave to sin. (laughs) So that's all I have for you. Um, And God willing, I will see you next time.